This photograph shows the Lucatone at a depth of seven centimeters from the upper eyelid, parallel with the nose. Now the handle of the instrument is elevated, making the deep frontal cut. What they were saying was homosexuality is a mental disease. Homosexuality is a pervasive emotional disorder. It is psychopathological. Now, what makes it psychopathological? In their view, what makes it psychopathological is that two people of the same sex love each other. Rick? Have you had a transorbital lobotomy on August 1st? Do you know what day it is today? It's August 9th. That's right. Why did you have that operation, do you know? I think it was something to do with my uh, sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Was that seriously in error? Well, I thought it was, anyhow. No, I didn't either. I just finished reading the Kinsey report. Well, you're as long as I am. There. There you go. Yes. There I go. I go around. This way? this way? This way? Yeah. This is Dr. Evelyn Hooker, now 84 years old. When she began her psychological research on gay men in the 1940s, homosexuality was regarded as a mental illness. That is the little house, <clears throat> it was a little guest house, in which the research began. That little house. Evelyn Gentry was born on September 2nd, 1907. She spent her early years with eight brothers and sisters in a one-room farmhouse on the Colorado Plains. When Evelyn was 13, her family moved to the little town of Sterling, Colorado. Growing up for me was a very painful process. We were very much aware that we lived on the other side of the railroad tracks. I was very tall when I was an adolescent, almost six feet, and girls at that time, especially in a small high school, were not favored, let us say. In 1924, 17-year-old Evelyn began to work her way through the University of Colorado. Well, I went to Boulder, and I worked taking care of a family, um, cleaning house, cooking, so it was the only thing I knew how to do. Evelyn was drawn to psychology, a relatively new scientific field, which in the 1920s was dominated by behaviorism, the study of stimulus and response in animals. Guided by her mentor, Dr. Carl Munzinger, Evelyn early on challenged the conventions of behaviorism by attempting to prove there was mental mediation between stimulus and response. Under his direction in a course in abnormal psychology, he suggested to me, which was most unusual, I think, he suggested, why don't you, Evelyn, write your own case history? And the more I began to get into it, the more I realized it became a challenge, uh, not only to my own understanding of myself, but also that as a science, that, uh, that this was, a, in a sense, a new and budding science, and that therefore the challenge could be really very considerable. After she received her master's degree from Colorado, Evelyn became one of 11 women enrolled in the PhD program in psychology at Johns Hopkins University. I wanted to go to Yale, but no, no. The chairman of the department, not Dr. Mincer, the chairman of the department decided 
that he could not refer a woman to go to, to Yale. He himself was from Yale. And he had studied why raccoons wash their food. I think the only thing he discovered was to get it clean. In any event. So he said, no, he couldn't do that. I go to Hopkins. And then I'm terribly glad. It turns out to be my kind of place. 